Good morning, good night, good evening, wherever you are in divine consciousness. Hello, I am Yayi Joyce and welcome to Sacred Stories. Sacred Stories is where I share stories from different traditions. I'm an interfaith minister, a priestess, and a hoodoo worker, and a root worker, and a holistic counselor, and herbalist. And in indigenous culture, we share stories because they are a powerful way to guide, teach, and inspire. And when I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, I tell them I'm not the healer. What I am here to do is to guide, teach, and inspire you just as Jesus did. Jesus never claimed to be the healer. Jesus always claimed to be the vessel of God. Storytelling is effective because it helps establish connection among people as well. And it helps you to think. It helps your ori to move. So I pray that these stories have blessed you and fill your life with joy and grace. And if these stories do bless you, make sure you can always donate to uh, yayijoyce.com. That's Y-A-Y-I-J-O-Y-C-E.com. Or you can also donate to our Sovereignty Garden at hoodoohealing.net. You can click the links in the bio at Linktree Yayi Joyce, and it'll take you there. And this today's story is about, it's called Rock, Pebbles, and Sand. Rock, Pebbles, and Sand. So a philosophy professor uh, stood up in front of the class one day and he was in front of his college class and being a professor and doing the professorly things that he was about to do, right? And so the professor said to the students, okay, Look, I have a large, empty mayonnaise jar. He filled the top of the jar with rocks, and he asked his students if the jar was full. The students said yes, that the jar was indeed full. Then he added small pebbles to the jar and gave the jar a bit of a shake so the pebbles could disperse themselves amongst the larger rocks. And then he asked again, is the jar full now? And the students agreed that the jar was still full. I don't know how they could agree with that. He put the pebbles in there and he made some room. The professor then poured sand into the jar to fill up any remaining empty spaces. Then the students agreed that the jar was completely full. The professor went on to explain that the jar represents everything that is in one's life, which will, which when you think about it in these days and in these times that we are going through, there are so many different rocks, there's so many different pebbles and there's so many different sands of life. The rocks are equivalent to the most important projects and things you have going on, such as spending time with your Ori, your higher self and your ancestors and your family and maintaining good health. The pebbles represent the things in life that matter, but you could live without. The pebbles are certainly things that give your life meaning, such as your job, your house, hobbies, and friendships but they're not critical for you to have a meaningful life. But so many times I see people make pebbles their rocks. 
these things often come and go and are not permanent and they're not essential to your overall well-being. Finally, we have the sand that represents the remaining filler things in your life and material possessions. This could be small things such as watching television and browsing through Facebook and Instagram. And we think these things add so much value to our lives, but they honestly don't. Oh yeah, running errands and doing things for other people. And instead of saying no, yeah, that represents the sand in life. These things don't mean much for your life as a whole. And they're likely only done to waste time or get into small tasks accomplish. Getting these small tasks in life accomplished will pose difficult if you're always filling up on sand. So what's the biggest lesson with this rock, pebble, and sand and jar in the story? I want you to think about your rocks, your pebbles, and your sand. What's small and insignificant, but you're giving so much of your time to? What is a pebble or a sand in your life, in your past, that you are making a rock? Is it your childhood? Your parents or... I see this so many times. People sometimes searching searching for a parent or searching for a family where God has distanced you from that for a reason, but you're making it such a rock. What are your rocks? What are your pebbles? What are your sands? In order to have a more effective and efficient life, pay attention to the rocks. because they are critical to long-term well-being. When I think of my rocks, I think of building a sustainable career and business that's personally rewarding. Herbs are personally rewarding to me and it's personally rewarding to assist people to live a life of joy through personal coaching and counseling. Oh, pay a close attention to your health. That's a big rock for me. It may not be a big rock for you, but after 9-11 and some years after 9-11 and learning to have WC, WTC lung, I had to pay close attention to my health. Don't believe in these myths that, oh, I don't need to wear a mask. The, oh, no, it's not going to happen to me. Oh, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> Pay close attention to your health. And if you know the stars as I know the stars and you can see what's going on Spend time with your family. We are in fragile times. Spend time with those that lift you up and take you to new heights. Come up with fun activities for your kids. Build memories with those that are in your home. Because everyone that lives with you, by blood or not, is your family. Build a solid relationship 
with yourself first and foremost so that you can build a solid relationship with your spouse or significant other or those that are attracting significant others and spouses in their lives right now. Build a solid relationship with yourself. Exercise and keep in touch with relatives that live far away. All in all, the rocks, the pebbles in the sand. The professor was trying to tell the children and as I am telling you today, if you are able to identify the important things in your life ahead of time and set aside the time you need to work on them, then in the long run, it's okay to procrastinate a bit on the pebbles and the other projects that are not important. The jar is still full. So what do you need to focus on? What do needs to be your rocks right now to continue to live a happy, full life? Oh, and a happy full life is without over obligating yourself. If you solve the big issues first, putting the rocks in the jar first, the small issues will still fall into place. However, the reverse of that is not true. Apply the principles that matter. So I'm going to ask you, what are your rocks? What are your pebbles? And what is your sand? Live well and live in ultimate joy. And if you are inspired by our stories, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you click notifications to get sacred stories and share them with friends and share the messages, pass on the wisdom. And if you need me, you know where to find me. That's yaijoyce.com, Y-A-Y-I-J-O-Y-C-E.com.